coming on, boys. Yeah, that'd be a real good spot. What's up, guys? Welcome to the third video of the Mapping Whitetail series with Onyx. Myself, Ted, and Jake come out to do some big woods scouting today, and that's what this video is going to be all about. We just got into the main part of the timber here, and we're up on top of this high ridge. And basically what we have here overall is a lot of big monotonous timber that's pretty open, but there's lots of ridges and ditches and stuff. And the habitat transitions within the big woods are much more subtle. So the first thing we're gonna do is follow these trails in there, down these ridges and head into the ditches and see if we can start finding some bedding. And then we'll explain how that sets up and then we'll go through how we're gonna hunt it. Ted's got his tick hater socks on. Oh, look, here's a bed, Ted. What have they been laying up in there? Lots of oaks and monotonous timber in here. Pretty open up top, but you can see here we're starting to get down closer to where the ridges drop off into some of these little drainages and stuff. I can already see there's a lot of rubs right down in there where there's a subtle transition line. We're seeing a lot of white oaks up here on top of the ridges, but as we go down into these ditches, the habitat types will start to change. There'll be some different kinds of trees growing down in there. The red oaks will tend to grow in the ditches, at least in our area, and then drop a lot of acorns in those ditches. And at the bottom of the ditch is usually a creek of some sort where they all wash in. Deer like to bed down there close to those things, so they got water during the day, and they also get a thermal advantage. So I'm assuming we're gonna find some beds down here. We're following this trail down right here. Look at the size of this rub. I would assume that this is down in where a lot of the bucks are bedding during hunting season. You can see that there's still some bark on top of the foliage and the leaves, so you know it's from last fall, in fact. And then you know it's from after the leaves dropped last fall. So bucks hit this rub sometime, probably in mid to late October, after the leaves started to fall. Check this out. Look at this bare dirt right on the back side of this tree. We're getting close to the ditch. We're only about 30, 40 yards from it. And there's hair in it. That deer's laying right here, right above the tree, facing down this little ditch with the wind coming off the top. These big wood scenarios are kind of tricky to navigate because there's not any real distinct habitat transitions like what we were talking about initially. What I'm ultimately looking for is just several ridges that dump down into a main ditch and that kind of forms a thermal hub at the bottom, if you will. And there's lots of opportunity for bedding in and around that hub. Once those deer get down on these points, a lot of times they're here wind-based. So that means that they've got wind coming over the top of the ridge, blowing down the ridge towards the ditch. And I'll show you what I'm talking about on a map. They'll lay here and they'll watch down there towards that ditch. And as you saw, we just came in down those ridges. If there's hunters or predators or whatever that are following their tracks or following their trails up there, up top, they're gonna smell us before we even get here. And if the wind is opposite, they're gonna be bedded across the ditch on the opposite ridges. This is the first of many beds I'm assuming we're gonna find down here, the, the closer we get to that hub where all those ridges kind of converge in that ditch. Now what we're finding once we come off of the ridges and we're getting real close to the ditch, it's only 20 yards from me right here. You can see it gets a little bit thicker right along the edge of the ditch because there's more sunlight getting to the ground right there. Right here in this little 20 yard buffer where the ridge plays out, it flattens out. So you've got the trails that are coming down the ridges that we just followed and they're meeting up with crossing trails that are running right along the edge of this ditch. There's one right there, one right here. Where a lot of these trails are meeting, you're going to find scrapes, you're going to find more bedding. A lot of those trails that we were just following kind of converged right here at the base of this ditch. This is one of those washes that we were talking about earlier. It's coming down between two ridges, and right here is where it's washing out. And that's funneling the deer movement around the head of this wash. That's why you got to come in here and scout, because all these look the same on a map, or they look very similar. But once you get in here and put boots on the ground, they're slightly different. This one in particular, this wash is pretty low on the ridge. So this would be a tougher one to hunt because of swirling winds. But if we found a ridge that was a hair steeper where the wash was further up the ridge, we could get away with hunting that type of trail or funnel because we're higher up, we can 
hunted on a more predictable wind. Or you could come in here on a calm, cold morning where you know that your thermals yep. are going to be rising and hunt it until the wind starts to pick up. That is another good point. If you hunt it on a very calm morning and you're able to slip in here without boogering too much, your thermals will just rise, especially on a calm, on a cool morning. Your thermals will rise until the day winds pick up and the sun gets up and then they'll start to fall down into these ditches and you'll be out of the game. Look at them rubs, that rub on that old tree down there in the bottom of it. See that one? Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Big. So you got beds down below. We're marking those on the map as we find them. You got more beds right up here on what I would call the roll of the ridge or the crest of the ridge where they can look down below and have wind coming over the top. Now what we're gonna do is go back to those same trails that we walked in on when we found all those big rubs and we're gonna walk those back out and try to find good spots to set up. Bunch of big buck turds. Probably where a bachelor group's been laying at this summer. But you can see these beds right over in here. And this is a very tiny pocket of diversity in what is otherwise very monotonous timber. It's on that same sort of crest line that we're following down. But right here, there must have been a big old tree that fell or something in the last five, six years. And you can kind of see how it's open behind me and then it gets a little bit thicker right in this patch where there's more sunlight coming through and look right up in there there's a dirt bed right there and there's another one to the left of it they just don't need a ton of thick cover to bed in these types of scenarios it doesn't just give them cover but it also gives them a place they can stand up and eat during the daylight where yeah. they don't have to travel anywhere right they get they can browse on all this new growth in here most of the time hunters will find this sign in here and they'll hunt it on the opposite wind. They'll hunt it with a wind blowing out of the main ditch where we're finding all these rubs and beds and buck poop and everything. They'll hunt it with the backwards wind. So the deer's not even on that ridge when they're hunting there. Yeah, the deer's not even there. And, if, and if they go in with the wind where the deer is bedded there, a lot of times the deer gets them because... They're not hunting a just off wind. Yeah. They're hunting the wind with where their scent's blowing right to the buck, which obviously most guys aren't gonna do. But we're gonna show you what we're talking about. We're going to follow this trail out because there's a bunch of rubs on it and we're going to get up closer towards the top of the ridge and start looking for good setups. Jake, how about you go stand in that bed and we'll film you. Can you see Jake from here? All right, I followed those trails up out of the bedding and I come up to this pretty steep cut that's coming off of the main ridge. We're almost up probably 40 yards from the top of the ridge right here. And there's a steeper ditch that's running out right in this spot. Obviously, the bucks have been using these trails. And what I had Jake do back here, flip around, Ted, is I left Jake in those beds that we just found, those dirt beds. And he's standing up in them. I think they're about 80 yards or so away. But I want to get to the point where I'm just out of view from those beds. And I think this big ditch right behind the camera here is going to allow me to, to sneak in here that close. Wave your hand, Jake. See him? I actually couldn't even see him. Mm -hmm. Wave it again. See, he's about 75 yards away from me and Ted. Go ahead and lay down, or get down like you would be a deer in there. I can just see the top of his head. I can see him moving his hand down in there, like a deer would be laying there. And a deer would be laying there with a wind coming like this that'd be out of the west or a southwest or a northwest wind. So, if we go right back over here, this ditch is creating that uh, ditch funnel that we looked at a while ago. Remember those trails we found in the bottom? Yeah. This is one of those steeper ditches. So the funnel is created higher up on the ridge. We can pop up to this point right here because now I'm out of sight from Jake. I'm about 80 yards from him. And we can get in any one of these trees and shoot that ditch funnel while still being close enough to where the deer beds because they're coming and going from this direction there's fields way out that way where they're going to feed at night but they're bedded way back in here in the middle of this monotonous timber these are the types of setups that we're looking for you get in one of these trees you blow a west wind that's taking your scent straight down into the ditch down this big ditch and the deer are bedded 
that way. So you're actually hunting them on a crosswind, but they can't get your scent if you're set up right in the middle of that ditch and they're coming around you at the stand location. It's a cool spot. But hopefully that was a good example of big woods scenarios that we run into and uh, they can be awesome spots to hunt. They seem harder to scout, but as you all could see, all we did was get on the deer trails and follow them back in there until we started seeing tons of sign and beds pop up. And then we reverse engineer that movement back out to find potential stands. Ready to go, Jake? I don't want to. I suppose though, so it's getting ticks on them. No, okay, tough guy. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. One more Mapping Whitetails video, and then we're going to recap it all with a live podcast. Thanks for watching.